Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, happy Friday. In a short while, we will be joined by our regular uh, start of the month guest, and that is Maximo Torero, the chief economist of the Food and Agricultural Organization, who will brief you on this month's food price index. A uh, travel announcement uh, to share with you. Uh, Secretary General just returned to New York a few hours ago, and on Monday afternoon, he will arrive in Montreal in Canada, where he will, be, where he will on Tuesday and Wednesday attend the 15th meeting of the Conference of Parties to the Convention of Biological Diversity, otherwise known as COP15. The first part of COP15 was held in Kunming, China in October of last year. This second part will include the continuation of negotiations by parties to the Convention on Biological Diversity, which we hope will lead to the adoption of an ambitious post-2020 global biodiversity framework. In the remarks to be delivered at the opening ceremony of the conference, the Secretary General will underscore the importance of making peace with nature, which is our life support system. He will also warn that if our bottomless appetite for unchecked and unequal economic growth continues, we will risk facing mass extinction. The Secretary General will also call on countries and the private sector to develop bold action plans that protect biodiversity and support sustainable practices. And he will reiterate his call for developed countries to provide financial support for developing countries, many of which are custodians of the world's natural wealth. While in Montreal, the Secretary General will also meet with the Prime Minister of Canada, Justin Trudeau, as well as COP15 President, Ms. Uh, Minister Huang Runqiu of China. In addition, he will also meet with representatives from civil society, including women's group, youth, indigenous communities, and regional groups. The Secretary General is scheduled to return back to New York on Wednesday evening. Turning to Ukraine, our humanitarian colleagues on the ground are telling us today they are raising concerns about the impact of the conflict on civilians in the easternmost parts of the country, particularly in the Donetsk region and in, the southern, uh, in their southern neighbors in Zaporizhia. While the world's attention has been on the grave situ humanitarian situation in Kherson, dozens of towns on both sides of the front lines in Japarizza have been shelled daily during the past weeks. That's according to our NGO partners on the ground. People in these towns face tremendous challenges, accessing gas, water, and electricity in their homes. Most people in the regions of Donetsk also face extremely limited access to heating, water, health, and education services following damage to civilian infrastructure. Over the past couple of days, our humanitarian colleagues have received reports from local authorities of civilians killed and injured on both sides of the front lines. Yesterday, uh, several schools in both Ukrainian and Russian-controlled parts of the region were reportedly hit. As temperatures continue to drop in Ukraine, heating has, as mentioned, become a major issue in the Donetsk region. On the Russian-controlled side, including the city of Donetsk itself, families cannot heat their homes and the centralized heating system is not operational. Piped water is also limited to a few uh, days per week for a few hours. Our humanitarian colleagues note that, noted that on the Ukrainian-controlled side, most people who stayed in the frontline cities are elderly, mainly older women, people with disabilities, and other vulnerable groups. Making sure they're protected and have access to heating during the winter can be a matter of survival for them. On the response side, we've distributed hundreds of generators to hospitals, schools, and heating points across Ukraine for people cut off from utilities. We've also provided winter supplies and services, heating appliances, and house repairs to over 630,000 people. Most of this work can only take place in areas under government control, and humanitarian access to the other parts of the country remain a huge challenge. Moving uh, to this hemisphere in Haiti, I can tell you that we and our humanitarian partners have been stepping up support to the authorities to fight the cholera outbreak. Pan American Health Organization, PAHO, has increased the number of cholera treatment centers in support throughout the country from 49 to 62. It has also helped to reinforce the capacity of three laboratories able to perform cult, uh, cholera culture tests. UNAIDS with UNDP and UNFPA and UNICEF have recently launched new cholera and health sensitization activities in Croix de Bouquet, which is in the Port-au-Prince metropolitan area. These campaigns are focusing on women and girls impacted by the intensification of gang violence there. 
Meanwhile, the World Food Program has added helic a helicopter to its existing fleets of two aircrafts in order to increase deliveries of supplies to fight the epidemic outside of the capital, Port-au-Prince. To end the blockade on the country's main fuel uh, terminal has led – excuse me – the end of the blockade on the country's main fuel terminal has led to an improvement in the availability of fuel and other supplies in the capital, but accessing and transporting goods remains a problem for our humanitarian partners. They are struggling to access medicines and oxygens, which are critical to the cholera response. WFP says it intends to resume maritime transport services for the humanitarian community after they were suspended for more than two months due to the ongoing security and to the fuel crisis. Uh, WFP also managed the delivery of 73,000 gallons of fuel from the U.S. to Port-au-Prince, which is being distributed to 19 partners on the front lines of the cholera response. Meanwhile, a $145 million appeal for additional humanitarian funding launched last month has received only $7.5 million. Uh, turning to our peacekeeping colleagues in Mali, the mission there reports that its temporary base near the Timbuktu – near Timbuktu came under direct fire this morning. The attack was repelled by UN peacekeepers and no casualties, thank God, were reported on our side. A quick reaction force was dispatched to the areas to reinforce peacekeepers on the ground. The temporary base was set up following an attack a day earlier in the same area on a MINUSMA convoy that resulted in two local contractors being wounded. The Deputy Special Representative um, of the UN in Mali, Daniela Kroslak, said the mission remains determined to implement its mandate in close collaboration with Malian authorities. And uh, moving uh, across the continent to South Sudan, in a joint statement, our peacekeeping mission there and the international community represented in South Sudan expressed deep concern over the escalating violence in the Upper Nile State and the northern parts of Jonglei State, noting the impact of the deteriorating security situation on communities. They called for an immediate cessation of violence and encouraged Shiluk and Nuer community leaders to help stop this conflict. The members, the members of the international community also expressed serious concerns over the UN's reports of continued attacks on camps for internally displaced persons and the increased risk of conflict-related sexual violence. They called on national and local authorities to take immediate measures to demilitarize the area along the Nile uh, River. Uh, senior personnel appointment uh, to share with you uh, today. Uh, we have a senior uh, – today, Secretary General uh, is confirming the appointment of Natalia German of the Republic of Moldova as the Executive Director of the Counterterrorism Executive Directorate, otherwise known as CTED, following the concurrence by the uh, Security Council. Uh, she will succeed Michelle Konix of Belgium, to whom the Secretary General is grateful for her commitment and dedicated service to the organization. The Secretary General also wishes to extend his appreciation to Deputy Executive Director, Director Wei Shang Chen, who will continue to serve until Mr. German assumes uh, Ms. German assumes her position. Ms. German currently serves as the head of the UN Regional Center for Preventive Diplomacy in Central Asia. She brings to the job over 30 years of experience in senior leadership, and her um, bio is available online. Um, our friend Volker Turk, the High Commissioner for Human Rights, today expressed shock that more than 130 people have now been sentenced to death by military courts behind closed door in Myanmar, and that's since the launch of the coup last year. Uh, at least seven university students were sentenced to death by a military court on November 30th. There are reports of as many as four additional death sentences being issued against youth activists. The UN, High Commission, uh, the U UN Human Rights Office is seeking clarification of this information. Um, and uh, also related to the uh, general situation in Myanmar, the UN Refugee Agency and humanitarian partners said they're observing a dramatic increase of number of people attempting perilous crossings of the Adaman Sea this year. Some 1,920 people, mostly Rohingyas, travel by sea from January to November from Myanmar and Bangladesh compared to only 287 last year. That's a more than six-fold increase. UNHCR warns that any attempt at these journeys are exp exposing people to grave risks and fatal consequences. Tragically, 119 people have been reported dead or missing on these journeys this year alone. 
And a new report published by the World Health Organization presents ways to address the growing worldwide concern to keeping children safe online. Uh, to prevent uh, online violence against children, the report highlights the importance of implementing educational programs directed at children and parents. Uh, more information from WHO on the interweb. Today is the International Day for the Abolition of Slavery. In a message for the day, the Secretary General notes um, that we need to recognize that the legacy of the transatlantic slave trade of enslaved Africans reverberates to this day, scarring our societies and impeding equitable development. He stresses that we must also identify and eradicate contemporary forms of slavery, such as trafficking in person, sexual exploitation, child labor, forced marriage, and the use of children in armed conflict. Tomorrow is the International Day of Persons with Disabilities. In the message for that day, the Secretary General says our world is confronting a cascade of crises that are disproportionately impacted persons with disabilities. He emphasizes the need for transformative solutions to rescue the uh, sustainable development goals and leave no one behind. And Sunday is the International Day of Banks. Who knew? Uh, they're closed on Sundays. Why would it be on Sunday? Uh, Edie. Uh. Thank you, Steph. Um, in light of uh, Mr. Turk's uh, comments about the death sentences in Myanmar and uh, the most recent ones against young people who had been protesting, does the Secretary General have any plans to uh, try and uh, talk to any of the Myanmar leaders? Um, you know, the, the contacts we've had through leaders of, of Myanmar are, are mostly um, through um, our special, um, special advisor on, uh, on Myanmar, Nolene Heiser. Um, messages are being of concern are being expressed uh, publicly. Uh, as we're doing today, because the Secretary General clearly uh, joins the High Commissioner in his expressing his concern at this, uh, and through other channels. And um, one other um, question. Um, there, well, come back to me. Thank you, uh, Steph. I have a question on Syria. The Security mm -hmm. Council uh, will begin discussions on the cross-border mm -hmm. uh, resolution uh, these coming weeks. Uh, has the UN uh, been informed or engaged with the council members as to what the fate of the resolution will well, be? Well, uh, obviously the fate will be a little uh, clearer uh, soon. The, if, if I'm correct, the previous resolution that uh, allowed for the continuation of uh, cross-border and, and cross-line also called on the Secretary General to report back to the Security Council on this, and he will do so uh, in the coming days. Uh, do, do you know when exactly you'll brief the Council? Uh, I think it has to be there before the 10th of December, so I assume it will be there uh, before uh, the 10th. Our position, of course, on the need to continue uh, the cross-border uh, remains unchanged. I mean, I think yesterday I mentioned we just recently done a cross-line, uh, which is extremely useful, uh, but that nothing really can replace our cross-border operation for the more than two million people that depend on it. If I may have one more follow-up. Uh, at the moment, there is only one border crossing, and how many crossings do you think the UN needs? Are you going to push for more? Well, I mean, we could, let me put it this way, we can use all the crossings that we can, that we could get. Uh, right now, we're only using one because that's the permission that we've had. Deji. I, I have uh, two questions. First one, today, WHO said that they still do not have uh, unfettered access to bring humanitarian access to Tigray area. Sorry, say again? WHO uh -huh. has no unfettered access to Tigray area to bring the humanitarian assistance. Mm -hmm. uh, since the SG was in Ethiopia a couple of days ago, has he 
talked the issues of uh, humanitarian aid to Tigray area with the yeah, all the I mean the, the 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 situation in Tigray was clearly discussed uh, with the prime minister. We have made known our publicly uh, our um, our needs for more and better access to Tigray and other places in Ethiopia. And another thing is today. Uh, the compound of the embassy of Pakistan in Kabul mm -hmm. was under attack. And the target, according to the foreign ministry of Pakistan, is the head of the mission, which is the, att the attempt at assassination has been failed, but yet still a security officer has been injured. Uh, any, uh, any, anything uh, the UN has to say about this? Well, I mean, we, we're first of all thankful uh, that the, the charge d'affaires uh, in um, of the uh, embassy of Pakistan it was unharmed. We we very much hope the security guard uh, recovers. But more importantly, we condemn firmly uh, these types of attacks. Do you think this shows that the deterior deterioration of security situation in Afghanistan? Look, I I, I don't think uh, from we have seen in Afghanistan uh, a number of. Uh, of of, uh, of attacks of security uh, challenges. We want the situation to get better and to to improve, uh, and we will continue to do what we can in that regard. Miss Letterer. Uh, thanks, Steph. Um, the first negotiations on a treaty to ban plastic mm -hmm. pollution in the oceans um, wrapping up today. Is the United Nations um, satisfied with this first week of negotiations and uh, whether the prospects of a treaty remain positive? It's a very good question. Let me, uh, let me consult uh, before I express an opinion for once. Yes, ma'am. Hi. Uh, Gazal Vasi with Independent Persian. I have a question about Iran. Uh, today marks the 77th day of protests in Iran. More than 60 children have been killed during the protest, and as young as seven years old. Uh, more than 18,000 protesters have been detained, many of whom are children at risk of receiving the death penalty. Uh, my question for you is, are we going to hear stronger words of condemnation from the Secretary General himself and what further steps are being taken by UNICEF to stop execution of children? Well, I mean, I think if you look back at what the Secretary General has expressed either directly or through his spokespeople, I think these have been very, very clear terms of concern, of condemnation of the violence uh, that we have seen. Uh, words calling for the need for, underscoring the need for dialogue between the authorities um, and people expressing their, their legitimate concerns on, uh, and especially when issues relating to the rights of women. Our, our position is, is unchanged. Uh, we continue to speak out against the death penalty anywhere around the world. Um, and I know our colleagues at UNICEF, I think uh, the UNICEF, issued a statement less than, than two, three days ago, and I would refer you to that because I think those were extremely strong words from the agency uh, in charge of protecting children. Okay, uh, we will go to our friend uh, Maximo. 